What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and welcome to my Lords of the Fallen walkthrough. Now, before we get right into it, there are a couple things I want to address up front, and the first is going to be trophies. Now, typically with these walkthroughs, I aim to obtain all trophies, or a platinum, if you will, and while that is also going to be the goal of this series, there are quite a few items that you're going to need to set aside time and farm for to obtain all trophies in this game. So while the walkthrough will go through everything that you need to do to obtain that platinum, similar to the Dark Souls 3 walkthrough that we did, if you want to get your platinum and you want to get all the trophies, you're going to end up having to spend time to farm up some stuff. So I want people to be aware of that in advance. Uh, in addition to that, if this is your first time playing through the game, I urge you to at least try and go through the game yourself first. Uh, by nature of this being a walkthrough, there's going to be a lot of spoilers, and at certain times we may even be talking about things that are happening later in the game than where we are at a particular time, just because they kind of loop in and it's relevant. And so if it's your first time, I personally, I think it's worth at least trying to get through the game and trying to experience it for yourself, just so you don't get spoiled and you can enjoy some of the surprises that the game has in store for you. But with all that being said, let's jump in. Of course, with all the walkthroughs, we're going to be burning through dialogue, burning through cutscenes. I want you to experience all that stuff on your own. We are strictly here to get down to business. And the first piece of business is the starting class. And when it comes to the starting class in Lords of the Fallen, you can really go with whatever you want. Uh, I've played strength build, I've messed around with agility builds, I've done some caster builds, and they're all pretty good. But I will say that for the easiest start, you should probably go with an Orion Preacher. And the reason being that we're going to have access to spell cast with this, but we can also drop off our spell catalyst and use ranged weapons. So this is essentially going to give us access to double the range potential as opposed to something like, say, the Mornstead Infantry, where we strictly have our throwing, or like the Ranger, where we're strictly counting our arrows. We're not going to have a catalyst, but by playing as a caster, we're going to be able to tap into both thrown stuff as well as mana, and that's definitely going to make our approach a bit easier throughout the game. Uh, but at the same time, don't feel compelled to have to play this class. Like I said, I've played through this with a, a couple different classes now and, and had a lot of fun starting out with multiple classes. But uh, let's change up this dude's hair. We got we got to do something with the hair on him. Looks like an old preacher dude. All right, we're gonna give him we're gonna give him that. We're gonna give him a uh, give him the stash. Let's give him the stash. Let's change up his face as well. This looks very... Oh, there we go. That looks good. That's a, that's a good stash. This guy looks like he means business. And he's ripped up. Ripped up for a preacher. I like that. Looks good. And let's get some let's get some tattoos on him real fast. We're going to give him uh, that on his back. Uh, we're going to put some on his legs, too. Sure. We'll put this one on. I'm just, I'm just clicking random things at this point. Most of that kind of looks like scars. Okay next there we go I think he looks good he's got a great stash oh we should change our name shouldn't we uh, character name can be fighting cowboy and then we will enable the tutorials on as well just so that we can address them when they come up so once you are in the game See, we already have medium weight. Uh, a couple things here. You're going to have your mana stone clusters on. So don't worry about anything else for now. This is going to be your main healing item. Uh, this thing is going to just absolutely wallop stuff. Does excellent poise damage. But for now, the best thing we're going to do is just run along ahead on this little path. We're going to loop this around. Roll through some stuff. We can run up and bonk this guy if you want. And then as we get up ahead here... And run down into this water to grab ourselves a little skull item that we can use to get some bigger. This is going to talk about locking on. Very simple. Just toggling between enemies with the right stick. You can already tell me and this hammer are going to be great friends. Uh, once we round this corner, it wants you to try and jump over this gap, but instead we're going to break this and fall into this gap in purpose. And that is going to gain us access to a taint. These allow us to change the coloration on our four pieces of armor, so a little bit of fashion souls there. Round the corner, jump over it. 
We'll talk about the ability to dash as well as double dodge. And what's important here is even a quick dash like that, we get iframes for that. So don't feel like you have to roll to avoid stuff. Just even a quick dash if you're locked on is going to get you iframes. And this is going to be very useful as we start fighting bosses. Here's our first thrown item. This is going to be a throwing rock. I would suggest putting this, uh, if we take off our catalyst, we can put it in. And the throwing rock is nice to have because anytime we want to knock something out of a tree, we can use that as opposed to using a spell catalyst and it's only going to cost one ammunition. A little tutorial explaining the uh, how ranged works. So we hit Y to select it, it's active, and it went down. We're going to now put on our catalyst and that's going to bring us back to our spells. This is kind of what I was talking about. As we play through, we're going to find a couple different range stuff besides just the rock. You know, we're going to gain access to uh, hatchets that could cause bleed. We're going to gain access to grenades that could heal. And if we just tap that off, we go to all of our throwing stuff immediately, which is super, super useful. Uh, so over here, we're going to enter Umbral. And to do this, we're going to hit down on the D-pad, hold the left trigger, and then press X. Or I guess square if you're on PlayStation. And you can see there are two vines going off of this. And what we need to do is locate those vines. And that's going to be what gains access uh, to that door. So since we're already in the Umber Realm, we're not going to be worried about holding up our lantern or anything. We're just going to go through and kill a couple of enemies real fast. This talks about our ability to tap Y in combat to switch between one-handed and two-handed. This can be quite useful for a couple of different reasons. It's basically creating your own combos, if you will. Uh, over here, we can use this to exit from Umbral, which we're going to have to do to pass ahead. So go ahead and pop that. And now we're going to go right here and we're going to re-enter Umbral. Well, we don't have to. We could we could use Rifting. To talk about Rifting, the idea is you could just hold this out and essentially walk over a, a temporary Umbral bridge. Well, since that one broke, we need to do it again. Oh, never mind. We're just going to go in Umbral. It's so weird that they even give us the tutorial. Because when you drop, it's going to interrupt your lamp. Anyway, just go into Umbral, run across, we'll grab this guy. And this is uh, one of, like, the seals that's blocking that door. So Soul Flay with your right trigger. We can also use this as a combat technique as well. But that's going to get one of the obstacles in our way. And we're going to drop down and continue along. Talking about soul flying enemies, I'm not gonna waste any time soul flying a basic enemy like this. I'm just gonna kill him. Soul flay again to open the door. Siphoning will allow us to hold up our lantern and hit the bumper to basically pop these little pustules, and we're gonna get energy back from doing that. That's what will give us additional soul flay charges. Talking about the wither mechanic, the idea behind wither is if we block an attack, it's going to turn into white health. As long as we attack, we can get that health back, so it makes shields incredibly important in this game. Anytime you see a little aura on one of these things, that means it has a saintly quintessence. This is going to be what increases our healing, so always keep an eye out for those. Not that it's going to matter, because I'll be telling you where they're all at. And now we're going to drop down again. This was actually supposed to be the plunge tutorial, but... Too busy loving my new hammer. Uh, now, the longer you stay in Umbral, the more enemies that will start to appear over time. Dread, which it's talking about right now, this will gradually fill over time. The longer you're here, however, you'll also receive more Vigor, which is this game's version of Souls. Now, what I mean by this is if you look up in the top right right now, it says times 1.10. This means that I'm getting an extra 10% Vigor off any kills that I get. Eventually, that modifier will go up to 1.2, get all the way up to 2.0. Uh, at one point, it'll make it all the way up to 3.0, and at that point, the gates will lock, and there is an elite enemy who will appear that will try to kill you, and will probably be successful if your first time going through the game and encountering that guy. So, we're going to walk out here, pop this one. 
play a little cutscene showing us the door is now unblocked. You know, use this to exit from Umbral. pop this door open. Now before we go into the boss fight, we're going to see if we can't spend and get a level here. Let's see. No, I did not mean to hit login. Oh, I can fix that shortly. Upgrade character. We are just barely short, so we did pick up a skull item earlier. We are going to go to our inventory and pop that. That should give us enough to level up. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Uh, and for our first couple levels, I'm going to suggest you focus on vitality and endurance. Uh, if you feel you don't have enough to attack or roll, get some more into endurance. But getting our vitality up to 20 uh, should be one of our, our first goals here. It's something that's, that's pretty useful for us. And real fast, let me just go to multiplayer, turn that back to off. As much as I love invasions, I don't want to deal with them in the middle of a uh, playing through here. If you don't want to do invasions or co-op, obviously that's how you do it. Since I'm trying to play and read notes at the same time, I will not be going through that. Uh, so this talks about blocking. Blocking in this game is actually very similar to Sekiro in the sense that if you perfectly time a block, it's going to be considered a parry. Uh, and that's going to remove some of the posture on the enemy. If you look at the middle image there, you'll notice how part of that ring is missing. That's the enemy's posture gauge. You can get through this with heavy attacks, with parry, or with kicks. Kick is actually a great way to help finish off posture. Uh, using something like a shield will make it even easier to get the parry off as opposed to using a weapon, but you can use whatever you want. I'm just letting this guy beat on me a little bit here. I want to try and get off a uh, heavy attack to show how much posture we get from that. You can see a pretty fair amount there, but not as much as the parry did. And now that he's low, we're just gonna... Kick him! There it is. We're actually doing this the hard way. We can just, uh... We can just do this. Now this first boss should be pretty easy to kill for you, uh, but once the Light Reaper spawns, honestly, just let him kill you. Now the interesting thing about this enemy is that we're going to encounter this enemy a couple times throughout the game, and we're actually going to let him kill us pretty much every time we encounter him until the last. Now you can certainly kill him before that, you can kill him even now if you're good enough, but the reason we want to wait is there is a side quest tied to killing him at a specific time, and if we don't complete that side quest, we won't gain access to the Dark Crusader class. So pretty much any time Light Reaper shows up until towards the end of the game, we're just going to flop on over and let him take us out. Small price to pay for the edgy Dark Crusader. All right, let me scroll my notes a little bit here. All right. So, going back down, we're actually going to enter Umbral, and that's because there's a stigma that we want to see. Now, you can typically tell where stigmas are because you'll see a uh, cluster of butterflies on the screen. There's going to be one that's around the corner. There should be one right here as well. Maybe that's something on New Game Plus then. There used to be a stigma over here. Either way, we still had to go into Umbral. We want to run on over here. It's going to make a right right at the start of things. We're going to grab the Flayed Skin. Now, this is actually going to be a... Uh, this is tied to that Dark Crusader quest. So just remember this location. We'll be coming back here significantly later in the game. Oh, never mind. I scrolled my notes too far. Well, that's okay. We already went Umbral, so that's fine. We can uh, transition out of this up ahead. 
So Umbral Parasites, these protect enemies. We're able to just use the right bumper to basically vacuum it away. And then we can kill this guy with these. Go ahead and pick up. Come on, pick it up. Why are you struggling so much to pick up loot? There we go. We go ahead and grab this bridge. Then we're going to lock on and do it again. Isaac's flashed, armed will kill enemy. Uh, get the loot and cross the bridge for a vestige. So we're going to go ahead and hit this vestige. Rest on up. That's going to take us out of Umbral. And we're going to go ahead and talk to the Iron Empire Wayfarer. Your proper take it lightly. I don't know, but since it making you a bigger, I've diff if you know any, I've diff if Anytime you start any seeing the dialogue loop, that means you've gone through all of it, and that's what we want. I'm going to run up ahead here, and this is the stigma I was talking about. So we're going to go ahead and re-enter Umbral. And you can stand and watch these if you want. I'm just going to grab them and then proceed along. But over here to the left, we have some loot. And then right back here, there's going to be some more loot. Kill that enemy. Kill that enemy. Pick up the minor fire salts that it dropped. And we'll get that. And we have three enemies up ahead here. You can kind of see them. We're going to try and get... Got one down. Now we can round the corner. We'll let this one come after us. all the loot from them. As you make it into the village here, immediately make a left. We're going to kill this guy first. We're going to kill this guy. Go ahead and pick that item up. And then right back here, I'm going to open a chest. We got the Hollowed Condemnation. It's a low scaling quality sword. Our health is super low, and this is exactly why we're going to prioritize healing on up. Now, next thing we want to do is take out this guy from far away. So we're going to... should take two, maybe three spells, depending on the class. There we go. That little shing, that indicates the, uh, the kill of the enemy. And then we're going to throw this rock to get that out of the tree. And put our Preacher Catalyst back on. And there are a couple more enemies to kill over here, so we're going to go ahead and take them out next. Ignition pouch and mana stone cluster. I believe there was one more. Yes. There's this one. We're going to have to use our lamp to pull that parasite. Alright. Now, there is going to be an enemy who has already seen us that is not very fun. Uh, this may be too difficult for now. In the event that you die, we're going to run straight over and get a, uh, a safety spot. But if not, we're going to sit up here. We're going to blast him with our holy powers. Don't feel bad if you can't kill this guy. He's very much intended to be... Uh, you know, harder than you would fight this early. That sword can absolutely hit you up here as well, so be careful about that. Right now he's doing a little combo. We're just going to let him go through that. And we'll actually plunge and get him with a big plunge attack. Make things a little bit easier. That's the best way to kill that guy early. Just hit him with a plunge. Okay, take it off again. 
And you can, of course, use your spells to knock things out of trees like that, but uh, in this particular case, it's more about just maintaining the mana. I don't really want to use my mana for that when I can just use a rock. All right, um, so we're going to get plunges, hit through platforms, snipe the item in the tree, up the ladder. Now we are going to pull out our lamp. And we're going to want to walk across. A couple more enemies here. We can take them out. Use our ranged abilities if you want. Oh no. Barely missed that. Pick up the skull, pick up the stick. Another skull. Uh, anytime you see souls, you can use your your bumper to basically vacuum them on in, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Hit the platform, circle back to leave Umbral. We killed them. Alright, so we have the three enemies up ahead, but we're actually going to go and get our first vestige now. And if you're really struggling with the fire guy, this is exactly what I'd suggest you do. We're just going to run right up this way, run past them, run past them, and then round this corner, go up, and there we are. So now that we have a new safety spot, we're going to go ahead and upgrade. As I already mentioned, we're going to be focusing on vitality pretty much exclusively for the time being. Uh, we get really good gains up to 20 on that, so that is going to be the focal point. Uh, we're going to grab a quick amulet before we continue. We're not going to fight everything that's over here, but we are going to go ahead and throw a rock at that. We're going to run up and grab it. And then we're going to actually enter into Umbral. Now this is a bell door. This will lead us to the frost region. It's not going to come into play right now, but just be aware of it. Go ahead and yank this. That's just going to create a platform we can drop down to. And remember, you always want to be aggressive when you're in the Umbral Realm, because you want to get that Withered Health back. Go ahead and pop that belly. Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliar. Go ahead and get this. course, watch it if you want, but you'll know that it completes because the Umbral Scourings pop up on the right side of the screen there. Uh, after that, this is actually going to drop us down to pretty much right where those enemies that we ran past are, so we can see them right here. Keep in mind, if you die while in Umbral, you do not get a second life. Dying in Umbral is, is just death, so definitely be careful. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that heal. Ahead, we have an enemy that serves for the backstab tutorial. Let's get a charged heavy attack on him and get a free backstab. Oh, nice. Raw Mangler Axe. Over here, we're going to get some berries. You're going to find a lot of these throughout your, your playthrough, the unripe berries. Uh, but I would always suggest having at least one. And the reason for this being that there is a quest later on in the game where we're going to need to have an unripe berry. And so you want to make sure that you at least keep one of those so that you have it when the time comes for the quest. All right. So just to make things simple, we're going to go ahead and exit Umbral for just a second. Um, even though we're actually about to go right back into Umbral. But one of the things is uh, exiting Umbral, it's going to reset that dread meter. And that's nice because we don't want Mr. Scarlet Reaper showing up on us. So we can run up and do a running heavy on this guy. Take him out. And then we'll take care of his friend over here. Of course, you don't have to parry. 
Uh, heading down here, we're going to enter the Umbral Realm. This would be, I mean, you can technically try and use your lantern, but if you get low enough to where you are underwater and drowning, uh, you're just, you'll just drown. So anytime you need to enter into a substance, uh, down into whether it's water or a swamp, whatever the case is, Umbral is going to be your friend. that. Quite a few enemies are going to pop out here, but we're not terribly worried about them. So that we're just going to go on up and I have enough mana that we'll just grab that. Not going to worry about uh, using the stuff. You can see how I'm lining these guys up. Just backing up, trying to target the guy that's in the, the back, if they're close enough. See, it's vacuuming up all the souls. I'm gonna end up calling it souls the whole game. I know it's called bigger, but... I mean, it, I've called it souls for so long, so even in Elden Ring, I called it souls instead of runes. It's just, it is what it is in this case. Uh, after we get up top here... Suggest kicking this down immediately. Get a little iframes while we're interacting with it, which is nice. Kill him. And we'll exit from Umbral. While you're exiting Umbral, you also have... You, well, to be honest, you have invulnerability frames on pretty much any time... Any action you do. And if you are going up a ladder, if you're exiting Umbral... Any of that stuff is going to give you access to invulnerability frames. So you can see right there, I went for the parry, but I was unable to get it. Uh, that's because shields actually have small shields, then medium, then large. They have uh, gradually decreasing parry windows. So using a small shield to get parries is super useful. But even then, if we were to just block the attack and then follow up, we're still just going to get the wither. Uh, and this just loops back around. You couldn't see this path because we were in Umbral, but there's the little tree. And over here, there was that umbral ladder that we climbed on up. But head on up this ladder. Grab this nice little loop here. And then we will drop on down. And there is the Iron Wayfarer again. You carry the lamp, lock if you don't make use of the... So he gives us access to a Vestige Seedling. Now the Vestige Seedlings are pretty interesting. You can think of this as like a temporary Vestige or a Vestige Bonfire. Your Lantern will flash when you're in an area that can use one. These are single use and you can only have one of them up at a time. Now what I mean by this is if we were to interact with this Vestige and go to warp, any true Vestige we found we can freely warp to. But in terms of warping to a Seedling, we can only come back to the last seedling that was planted. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can purchase these infinitely. They cost, I believe it's 2,500 off the top of my head. Uh, and you can only carry five at a time on you. But the vestige seedlings, they're super useful for allowing you to progress through the game and basically create your own checkpoints, which is a pretty cool mechanic. So we're gonna level more vitality uh, in the I'm trying to think. Do we want to cover Pieta right now? Probably not. We're almost, we're, we're already at 30 minutes. So we're going to wrap things up here for episode one. Uh, in the next part, we are going to be clearing out a short zone up ahead, tackling the first real boss of the game. And then on top of that, we will be exploring the main hub, discussing uh, some things there and getting started on the Pilgrim's Perch. So make sure to stay tuned. And I'll catch you all soon as we continue.